Yeah. Yeah, dude, Eddie. Hey, thanks for your questions. We really do appreciate them. You know, these questions are great. They make us, they force us to do literature review, to do our own research, so that we make sure that we get you those answers. And, you know, most of these questions we can answer off the cuff. I didn't actually get this question yet until about a couple seconds ago. But some of these other questions that we're getting that force us to do a little bit more research into the subject that we love, thank you. Well done. So let's get into one of these questions. Just saw, what do you got? Q and A day. Here's a question. Ding. Oh, by the way, my name is John Belkowitz. I'm director of R&D and Intelligent Concrete. Love what I do. Well, acid etch and diamond grind. So we are publishing some videos of us putting an epoxy floor down. We don't claim to be experts, but we've gone through uh, a lot of outside work to include litigation on failure of floors, as well as the best way to prep floors, new products for prepping, blah, 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 blah. So every once in a while when we get the chance, not only did we do this floor, uh, we put a new epoxy coating on, but we're doing that in our new studio. We did all the work because, wow, it's just awesome. Doing that, that preparation, uh, ASTM F7010-11, and it goes into uh, ASTM F3010-10, and then it goes into ASTM D4258 and D4259 for the different types of surface preparation, and that's what we're going to do today. So our question today was, you know, why do you prefer acid etch to diamond grind or, or, or sandblasting? And I, I got to be honest, I don't have a, a preference. Um, it turns out then when we do our floors, we get donations or, or companies send us materials to showcase their product. We get their products for free. And one of the things that we got was a, an acid etch. It's called Clean Dissolve. Uh, awesome product by Obex. Very easy to use, just as if you would use an, a regular acid etch. But it's a little bit more environmentally and personnel friendly, as you'll see in the video that I think Pluchuli you're posting today. It'll be in the link below. So um, we used Acid Etch because it creates the profile uh, at the surface for the epoxy or the primer and then the epoxy to grab onto. And then it also does a great job of cleaning the surface. Um, you know, I uh, remember there was one job I uh, did for a family member and he said, do we really need to Acid Etch the surface? And I said, absolutely. And he refused to and I acquiesced because he was an uncle. And it was two weeks after we had put the layer down, the overlay, that we saw salt migrating through the overlay as well as the overlay delaminating. So anytime you don't go through that surface preparation process, normally you're going to run into issues. Um, and I, I challenge anybody who's done it for so many years that they've never had an issue, I, I just think you've never gone back to really check it out because surface preparation is one of the most important parts for that cleansing of the surface and then the surface profile. Um, and that's in the ASTM, so I don't care personally which one I use, it's just the one that's most convenient. Now I will be honest, using an acid etch is not convenient. Diamond grinding and acid, or and then sandblasting are a little bit easier to do, to set up, they're not as abrasive, there's not that stink that you get with acid etching. Bear in mind, clean dissolve, it's not as bad, but you still have a chemical process and you're going to smell that. So yeah, I would, sometimes I would rather use either the sandblasting or the diamond grinding. I'm not a big fan uh, of grinding the surface sandblasting. I'm a little bit more of a fan of, um, but I, I got to say the, the number of times that we've done it, we've always done an acid etch and it's a pain. It's a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the butt. Taping, you know, getting the wall ready, uh, spraying it, waiting that time, smelling that smell, the, diluting the surface, cleaning it up scrubbing it, then cleaning it, then scrubbing it, then cleaning it. And in our case, we had to go back a second time because we didn't leave the acid etch on the sealed portion long enough for it to break down that sealer. So if we had done diamond grinding or blasting, uh, we, 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 we wouldn't have had to have gone back. So there's, there's benefits or there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Again, I mean, it, it's not that I don't care. I do care. The most important part is do the process, whether you use ASTM D 
4258 or 4259, I think one is mechanical, the other one is chemical breathing, do it. Don't take a shortcut because you're going to end up paying for it either in a lawsuit or something's not going to go right. You're not going to be that lucky that every time you do it, it's going to turn out beautifully because concrete isn't that nice, especially for epoxy coatings. If you don't clean it off, that latience on the surface, that efflorescence, the salts, that in and of itself can screw up the bond between whatever you're putting on the surface and the surface. So whichever method you're going to use, just make sure you use it. Thanks again for that question. Who's that from? JJ? It just said JJ on YouTube. JJ on YouTube. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. It's a great question. Let us know if you have any more. Go concrete! Beat asphalt!